the first thing.
will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with the riches of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. Amen and amen. Good morning family of God. It's an absolute honor to have you join us this morning. On behalf of Pastor Brendan and Lucy Nadu, I would like to welcome you to our online Sunday service. Church, what a mighty God we serve. He, as you all know, is all for us. We, as a church, are so very blessed to have our shepherd, Pastor Brendan, bring a fresh word every single week right here into our homes. Church, during these tough times, we really need to tap into this online service by liking, by commenting, and by sharing. So as a church in unity, let's give God all the praise this morning. As we praise Him together in unity, church, let's give Him our very best. Let us pray. Father God, I want to thank you, Lord, for this new day, Lord. For, Lord, this is a day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your peace, and your joy that comes over every single home, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, as we start this service with our praise and worship, that there would be an open heaven over our homes, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we are on your narrow path, Lord. And even though we're going through tough times, Lord, may we seek you and we draw ever closer to you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for our praise and worship team. And we thank you, Lord, for our Pastor Brendan, who is going to bring a fantastic new fresh word, Lord. We pray this in your mighty name. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, let's stand to our feet. Let's give our King of Kings the best. Amen.
once again allowing us into your homes, hearts and spirits to share God's precious word. For a moment I would like to take our minds to yesterday, the 18th of July, which is known in South Africa as Mandela Day. Our late former president, Nelson Rolishrasha Mandela, had his birthday on the 18th of July and in honor of his memory for all that he had contributed to the history of South Africa and the world. South Africans are challenged to take 67 minutes of their day to do something good and sacrificial for someone else. The 67 minutes are significant of the 67 years that he had fought for the country and had given to the people of the nation. Of those 67 years, sadly, 27 years were spent as a prisoner in Robben Island. I was fortunate to have had the opportunity of visiting Robben Island when in Cape Town. It was a pokey, tiny little cell that barely three or four steps could have been taken in. And to think that he had spent 27 years in that cell, not for a crime that he had committed for his own gain, but for the fight for each one of us in our nation to have equality, a fight against segregation, discrimination and apartheid, a fight at which he was successful. And today I can be grateful that my children have privileges, go to schools and have access to amenities that I had never had. And so today we honor the memory of our late president. When I go into the word of God and when I read the scriptures, I think about how every one of us should be doing the same. I think about how every one of us have the opportunity and how every one of us have been commanded to do the same. Sacrifice for the needs of others. Sacrifice for the interests of others. Life is not just about ourselves, but it's about each other. And today you could ask yourself the question, what can I do in lockdown for the next person? The funny thing is not visit them. Uh, I think the greatest need right now in South Africa, the greatest battle that we are having is to social distance. And ironically, that is the greatest um, act that we can perform in order to prevent our fellow brothers and sisters from contacting the coronavirus. And so when you think about something good that you could do for someone else, first and foremost on the list is social distancing. Let's go to the word of God and see how God encourages us in this area of life, in giving and doing for others. Philippians chapter two, verse one to nine is the passage of scripture that I would like you to read right now and to reflect upon during the week and in your time of meditation because this is what life is all about philippians chapter 2 verse 1 to 9 the word of god says if you have any encouragement from being united with christ if any comfort for his love from his love in any fellowship with the spirit if any tenderness and compassion then make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not look only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ, who being in the very nature, God did not consider equality with God, 
something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a man, of a servant, being made human in likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. This passage of scripture talks about Jesus and how humbled he was when he was sent down from the heavenlies to become a human on the earth, to become a servant, to die a gruesome, painful, horrific death, just to sacrifice for you and I to have eternal freedom. It's wonderful to have certain freedoms and liberties as a citizen of the country that we live in, but it is even greater to know that we have eternal freedom from the clutches and the, um, the bondages that comes with um, spiritual uh, connotations, the clutches that the enemy, that Satan has over every one of us, um, that the devices that he has planned out to destroy us, to know that we have freedom from that, to know that we have hope in Christ, to know that we have salvation, and it had all come through the humility of God sending his son to be humbled as a human servant, to be crucified on a cross just for us. Today, we don't have to do that for anybody else, but we can love one another as we love ourselves. We can show interest in the lives of others, not only our own. We can be kind, tender, loving, compassionate, and not vain and conceited. And that is what life is all about. If you once again go back to the life of Nelson Mandela, a man who is honored and will be honored forever on this earth um, for what he has done for humanity. And also now in his death, bringing about um, a humane side of us, a side where we are forced to um, consider others and do 67 minutes of something good for someone else. When you go to the word of God, it aligns with what God is saying to us. Do something good for someone else. But not only one day in a year for a few minutes. Make it a lifestyle. And today, the greatest thing that we can do for each other in this lockdown period is to practice social distancing. I know it's the most difficult and most challenging thing to do. It is the law. It is becoming more and more difficult with laws being enforced even in the workplace where we are not allowed to socialize on weekends because we actually then will jeopardize our jobs when we go back to work on Monday. That is how imperative it is to practice social distancing, not for ourselves, not only for ourselves, but for the best interest of others. And I must say, it actually disappoints and pains me when I see known people dishonoring or disregarding that request or that law and socializing with family and with friends. That is not doing things for the best interest of others. It is doing things to grat gratify our social well-being. So today, in all humility, when you think about doing something good for someone else, as much as we are praying for each other all the time, as much as we may be chatting on uh, social media or WhatsApping or texting or whatever it is that we do uh, through our devices, let us make a concerted effort to practice social distancing. But above all of that, let us just love like Christ loved. Let us humble ourselves so that God in his time will exalt us. I pray that this is food for thought, good reflections, uh, good um, relevance to reflect upon. Have a wonderful and blessed week. And thank you again for sharing your valuable time with us. We love you. God bless you. Thank you. Let it all go. Now
Good morning, precious family of God. It's Sunday morning. It's the day of the Lord. And what a beautiful day it is to worship the Lord this morning. Thank you for joining us on our Sunday online service. And it's a joy to come into your homes or wherever you're listening from today. And I want to encourage you right now as before we go into God's word, we have come through 115 days of lockdown. 17 weeks of not being in church together not being able to worship together this unseen enemy COVID-19 the coronavirus has riveted our world many have been affected and even infected we have lost precious lives so many homes have been disrupted and affected our homes our finances our marriages our children have been affected even going back to school and what do we say as a people of God we don't have words to speak in times like this we don't know we don't have the answers we don't have the apt words to speak in. and I thought about the psalmist uh, as he declared I cry to the Lord and I thought about how the psalmist cried unto the Lord and how when we had little children in the home and when they cry we know exactly what that cry is about when your child cries you know that this is a cry because your child is hurt you know this is a cry because your child is hungry in the same way our Abba father knows our cry the Bible says he knows our cry and admits everything that you're going through right now this morning I want you to stop for a moment and I want you to join with me as we come into agreement one with the other and pray for one another, especially for those that have been affected and infected. In fact, I know that many people right now know somebody that's infected with this virus or some of you may be even fearful of this virus. We have been receiving so many prayer requests and even on Wednesday night, we prayed for so many people and you're most welcome to WhatsApp us your prayer requests on 079 484 8202. We'll try and put the number up for you 079 484 8202. Or you can put it in the comments the person that you're standing in the gap for this morning. We're going to go into a time of prayer in a few minutes. So I invite you to do that. Just put the name of the person, or you don't have to share the need, but we want to pray for them right now. We want to agree with God amidst everything that you're going through God is going to come through for you the Bible says in Psalms 147 verse 3 he heals the brokenhearted he binds up their wounds he counts the number of the stars he gives names to all of them great is our Lord and abundant in strength his understanding is infinite he heals the brokenhearted hallelujah there's a God that can heal the brokenhearted. There's a God that can bind up your wounds today. The Bible says that he numbers the stars. He names them. So God knows the stars. He knows you. He knows your name. He knows exactly what you're going through right now. He knows exactly how you feel. So I invite you, would you right now stand, if you can stand right now. And would you right now lift up your hands to the Lord. Let's cry out to the Lord this morning. Come, let's cry out to the Lord this morning. The psalmist says in Psalms 18 verse 6, In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. For in His temple He heard my voice. My cry came before Him into His ears. The cry of the children of God. Amen. Uh, Psalms 161 says, I love the Lord, for He heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy on us this morning. Psalms 120 verse 1 says, In my trouble, I cried to the Lord and He answered me. David's prayer was a cry. A cry is inarticulate, but it still has meaning to God. A cry may not be grammatically correct, but it's still understandable to God. A cry is wordless but it speaks volumes to God. This morning, your cry comes before the Lord. I want you right now, raise up your hands. Sir. Oh, say, Lord, I need you now, Father. I need the God that heals, uh, heals my broken heart. Raise your hands, everybody. Call upon the Lord. Oh, yes, I sent my word. I sent my word. And healed 
your disease. I am the Lord, I am the Lord, your healer. I am the Lord, I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord, I am the Lord. That's right. He's the Lord that will touch you right now. Come and raise your voice. Raise your hands and pray. I am the Lord that He let thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and healed your disease. I am the Lord. Your healer. He's the God that will heal your broken heart right now. Uh, he's the Lord that, that will heal up your wounds right now. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, uh, there's a God that cares for you right now. There's a God who understands. Uh, he knows exactly how you feel right now. Say, I am the Lord. Oh, that He let thee. Speak it over you. I am the Lord your healer I sent my word and healed your disease yes he is I am the Lord your healer so as you lift up your hands right now lift up your voice right now we're going to pray together one with the other right now come into agreement with you we're going to stand in the gap for you right now hallelujah Lord, I lift up my hands towards my brother, towards my sister right now. And I come into agreement for those people, Lord. Those names, oh God. I come into in agreement for our every prayer request. Oh God, your word says that you heal the brokenhearted, that you bind up the wounds, Lord. Your word says it, Father, that you know the stars in the sky, in the universe. Surely you know us right now. If you can take care of the sparrow, oh, if you can take care of the lilies of the field, surely, God, you can take care of us right now, whatever the needs is, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, Oh God, even Lord, financially, Lord, whether it be a marital problem, whether there be a children problem, a relationship problem, maybe there's a business in struggle right now. Oh, there's a family in struggle right now. God, today, heal the brokenhearted. Is somebody in hospital? Somebody sick in bed this morning? Somebody infected with this virus? And they're questioning you right now, Lord. I send this word to them. You are the God that heals. You are the God that restores. You're the God that puts back together this morning. And so, Lord, I thank you right now that you will speak to us that you will strengthen us in our inner man this morning as we receive the word of the Lord this morning, Father. I give you all the glory now. I give you all the praise. Oh, right now, everybody say, Lord, I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. Come on, somebody lift up your hands and say, Lord, you are the God that heals the brokenhearted. You are the God that binds up every wound. Wound. I take you at your word this morning. I take you at your word and I declare it is done in Jesus name, in Jesus name. And everybody said, amen and amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I sense the presence of God this morning. And I've been praying for you all week. We have prayer warriors that are praying for you. And so whenever you send your prayer request, I am praying for you. So don't be afraid to send it. It's confidential. And we will pray for your every need because we need one another. Hallelujah. I said we need one another. So this morning, I want you to turn in your Bibles. I'm going to share very briefly this word that the Lord has put on my heart. Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1. Psalms chapter 46 and verse 1. The psalmist again saying, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed. Oh, hallelujah. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, there is a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacle 
of the Most High. Hallelujah. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. The nations raised, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, somebody needed to hear that word this morning. The Lord of hosts is with you. The God of Jacob is your refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. Oh, hallelujah. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I want to speak to you this morning the word. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. God is our refuge. Oh, hallelujah. God is our strength this morning. The Lord of hosts is with us. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's happening around us, the Lord of hosts is with us. He speaks and the earth melts. Hallelujah. No matter whether the earth be removed, whether the mountains shake, whether it's swelling, whether the waters roar and be troubled, there is a God that is looking out for me this morning and He is the Most High God. Hallelujah. He makes His tabernacle with us. And this morning, I don't want you to walk in defeat. I don't want you to walk in emptiness. I don't want you to feel like you're all alone. Everybody is forsaken you. You have nothing. You don't know what to do with your life. You don't know what's going to happen. I want you to know the Lord of hosts is your refuge this morning. He's with you. Be still and know that He is God. Hallelujah. He is God. You cannot do it on your own. I cannot do it on my own. He is God this morning. Hallelujah. What does it mean? To be still. To be still, the word there means to admit defeat. To be still doesn't mean you just sit quietly. It means you admit defeat. It means you let down your hand. It means you give up trying to work it out on your own. Oh, hallelujah. It means to let go of your efforts, your striving. It means to be still. It, to be still it means to be free of human effort. Oh, hallelujah. It means to give up trying to be godly in your own strength. I love that meaning. It says give up trying to be godly in your own strength. You cannot put on a facade. And like we all wearing masks, you cannot put on a mask that everything is okay. You have to give up trying to do it your way. Come on, somebody. You have to give up trying to do it in your own effort, but rest in God. Hallelujah. Stop trying to be godly in your own strength. Let me say this to you. To be a Christian, to be a child of God, simply means you are a sinner saved by grace. Oh, hallelujah. There's nothing so wonderful about any one of us. We are sinners saved by grace. Hallelujah. I cannot boast in myself. I cannot do this. I've questioned the Lord so many times in this 115 days. And even in the 17 weeks that I cannot go to church and worship. That I cannot be with my church family. That I cannot uh, uh, sing with you and celebrate with you. And it, it is, it is such, a, it's such a, a horrible feeling. And, it, and for a pastor, for a man of God... It's such a it's such a it's such a horrible feeling. But I want you to know today, God is still God. He's still in control. Come on, say amen. 
and I cannot rely on my own strength. I cannot do it on my own. I cannot be godly on my own. And so there are times I just come before him and say, Lord, you take control now. I submit this to you. Oh, come on, somebody. I submit this to you. We have nothing to boast about. This morning, I want to encourage you. Let go and let God. Are you listening to me this morning? Let go and let God. It's time for God to step in. We don't have the answers, but we know the answer. Hallelujah. We don't know. Uh, 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 we don't know uh, which way to go, but I know the way, the truth, and the life, and His name is Jesus. Amen. You may not know what to do right now, but you know the way, the truth, and the life, and His name is Jesus. Come on, say amen. You may be frustrated about life, your situation, your circumstances, and you're straining, and you're trying, and you're trying to put on this mask and say, everything is okay, everything is okay. But I want you to know today, stop trying to be godly in your own strength. He is God, and He's in control. Hallelujah, somebody needed to hear that. Be still and know that He is God, and He's in control. The psalmist says in Psalms 95 verse 3, for the Lord is the great God. He is not just God. He is the great God. And, and the Bible says, and the great King above all gods. Oh, hallelujah. I've come to tell you today, our God is above every other God. Come on, say amen. In His hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are His also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. The Lord is the great God. Hallelujah. And the Bible says he holds everything in the palm of his hand. Oh, hallelujah. He holds the world in his hand. He holds the universe in his hand. Come on. He holds creation in his hand. And guess what? He holds you in his hand. Hallelujah. This morning, I want you to know he causes the sun to come up in the morning. He causes the moon to come up at night. He causes the earth to spin on its axis. He's the great God. So you stop worrying about your little problems or what may seem like a great problem or this issue and this pain and this Thing that you're going through I want you to know this morning be still and know that he is God I said he is God hallelujah I have to remind myself that I am not God he is God hallelujah I can't change you I can't change the situation right now I, I can pray as much as I can but I can't change the situation God can only change the situation because he's sovereign and he's God and so he holds everything in the palm of his hands. He made everything and in him all things consist. And I held in place by the word of his mouth. Hallelujah. He just speaks the word and everything falls into place. And the earth can fall into place. Come on somebody. The day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were planted and placed in his hand. Oh, hallelujah. You are placed in the hand of God. There is nobody. There is nothing. No virus. No circumstance. Nothing can take you out of the hand of God. Come on, say amen. Even if you have to perish, you are still in His hand. Hallelujah. The Bible says to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. That means you are just transferred location to where God is. Come on, somebody. So you are still in the palm of His hand. Come on, say amen. There will be hard times, but you're still in the hand of God. The Bible says in John 10, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone. Listen to this. I give them eternal life. Are you listening to me today? We have eternal life, not just life here, but life in eternity. And he says, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. You cannot. Nobody can snatch you out of God's hand. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, not even death can snatch you out of God's hand. Come on, say amen. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still means to be quiet. 
there's a lot of noise all around us. Wherever you look right now, there's a lot of noise. People think that where there's noise, there's action. People think that where there's noise, there's something happening. But I want you to know today, you can have the noise but have no substance. You can have the noise but no real substance. In fact, where there's noise, there's chaos and confusion and despair. The deepest work of God doesn't happen on the outside but happens on the inside. Are you listening to me? The deepest work of God happens in the hidden inner man. That's our hearts. Hallelujah. God works within us. And that's what God is doing right now. He wants you to steal your soul. He wants you to steal your soul. Steal your emotions right now. Don't be carried away by the noise and all the confusion that's going on. And all the negative words and the negative things and what people are saying. Steal your soul. Be still and know that I am God. No matter what you're facing, no matter who's coming against you, no matter what, what's happening in your home right now, I want you to know you can be still right where you are amidst the noise around you. You can be still and know that He is God. No matter what people say, no matter what they try to do, even to hurt my flesh, but I can still be still and know that He is God. He's in control and He's He's got me in the palm of his hand. He will take care of me. He will lead me and he will guide me. Come on, say amen. Ah, come on, say a better amen this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Be still and know that he is God. Isaiah 30 verse 15 says this. For thus says the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness, and confidence shall be your strength. I love that verse. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. Having confidence to know the God that promised me, the God that said he will keep me, he will never leave me nor forsake me. And having confidence in him this morning, having confidence and knowing that if he called me, He's going to sustain me, having confidence that knowing uh, that He is my Jehovah Jireh, my provider, having confidence in knowing that He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord, my healer, He is Jehovah Nissi, my banner of victory, having confidence uh, in quietness and confidence uh, shall be your strength. I'm speaking that over you this morning, in quietness and confidence shall be your strength don't make a noise don't go and try and shout about things and all of that don't make a fuss about things in quietness and confidence shall be your strength this morning come on somebody God is in control he's the great God I want to end with this this morning it's a beautiful story you know it it's in Mark chapter 4 when the disciples were with Jesus in the boat and they, got, they, they came into a storm. Jesus had just taught them about the parable of the sower. And then he said, cast your boat. Let's go to the other side. Hallelujah. Let's go to the other side. And I want you to know we will go to the other side. Even though we, we hit COVID-19, even though the waves are high and beating against our boat and the water is coming into our boat. We will go to the other side. Can somebody say amen this morning? Hallelujah. We will go to the other side. The Bible says that when the storm came and the waves were hitting against the boat, Jesus was asleep in the stern of the boat. The stern is the bottom of the boat. And the disciples went to Jesus. They woke him up and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And Jesus, he got up. He rebuked the wind and listen to what he said. He said, peace be still. And I speak that over you this morning. In your storm, in all the chaos and the uncertainty and the, and the, the, the fear and all, of, all that you're going through, the depression, whatever you're facing right now, be still. Peace be still. Oh, did you hear me this morning? Jesus said, peace be still. And there was a calm. And I'm reading from Mark 4 verse 40. This is what Jesus said. 
Why are you so fearful? Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? The disciples, Jesus is saying to his followers, why are you fearful? How is it that you have no faith? The Lord is speaking to me. The Lord is speaking to you this morning. How is it that you have no faith? I know you got no money. I know you're going through hard times. I know there's problems. I know there's uncertainty about our economy. But how is it that you have no faith? Wow, the Lord is speaking this morning. How is it that you have no fear? And the disciples in verse 41, they feared exceedingly. And they said to one another, the disciples, Who could this be? Who could this be? That even the wind and the sea obey him. Listen church, the disciples walked with Jesus. They, they lived with Jesus. They saw him do miracles. They heard him teach the word and instruct the word and perform mighty miracles around him. Yet they said, who could this be? They, they, they didn't realize who he was. Listen to this. I, I, when I, you may have didn't catch this before, but when I read it, it really spoke to me. How can the disciples say, who could this be? They know who he was. They experienced who he was. They knew what he was capable of. But something happened in the midst of the storm that they doubted who was in their boat. Hallelujah. Something is happening in the midst of this COVID-19. Something is happening in the midst of your, your trial and your test right now that you forgot who's in your boat. Hallelujah. You forgot the, the same Jesus that commanded the bread to be multiplied. The same Jesus that healed the sick, raised the dead, opened blinded eyes. The same Jesus, you doubting who this is. That he commanded the wind to stop and the waves to stop. I want you to know he's the same God in control of your situation this morning. Don't doubt him. He created the universe by the word of his mouth. He's in control. He knows the stars. You know how many millions of miles the stars are away from the earth. Yet God knows them. He names them. You think God can't take care of our problem or your situation or even this virus. God is in control. Oh, come on, somebody. God is in control. In crisis, in your storm, or when your way, the waves are beating you on every side, you lost your job, you lost your money, you lost your marriage, you got infected with the virus, you lost loved ones, all these things are hitting you. Yes, of course you feel down. Of course you feel low. You feel in pain and, and sometimes you anguish. But your cry comes before the Lord because He heals the brokenhearted this morning. He binds up the wounds. Hallelujah. He will bind you up and He will heal you right now. Be still and know that he is God what the disciples should have been doing is they should have been with Jesus resting in the boat oh come on now on the pillow and saying be still he's God I've got God with me hallelujah I've got God with me you don't need to be all flustered because you got God with you he's your peace in your storm this morning God could have stopped the storm before it happened because he knew where they were going. But you would never know the peace speaker if you never experience the turmoil, the storm, the high waves, and everything hitting against you. Right now, you will never know the peace speaker if you didn't go through a storm. He is the great God, and he's made a promise to you He's got you in the palm of his hand. Be still and know that he is God this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Be still and know that he is God. Don't doubt who he is this morning. Stand to your feet right now, wherever you are. I want you, Doctor, to leave this broadcast. Give me a few moments. I'm about to close with you right now. I want you to stay on this broadcast. Don't leave it right now. Give me a few moments. God is speaking right now. Lift up your hands. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah. God is saying to you, 
be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father, for your word this morning. Thank you for speaking to us this morning. So, so, so specifically, oh God, you have spoken to every one of us right now. Oh, lift up your hands. Would you right now for a moment lift up your hands right now? Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. When the oceans rise and thunders roll, you know it. I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. When the oceans sing it now, when the oceans rise, and thunders roar I will soar with you above the storm Father you are king over the flood I will be still know you are God Father I thank you this morning that your word is spoken directly into our hearts. And Lord, I believe today that many have been in chaos. Many of us have been trying to do it in our own strength. We have tried to be in our own way, oh God. We have tried to be godly even in our own way. We have tried to do our own efforts in our own striving and trying to work this thing out. And your word reminds us this morning to be still for you are God. You are in control this morning. You've got this and you've got us in the palm of your hand. So right now I pray, lift up the burden, break the yoke now. And I pray, set your people free to this morning. This Sunday morning will be a turning point in the midst of this crisis. For Lord, it will pass and we will go to the other side. I stand upon your word this morning. I stand upon your word this morning. So right now I invite you to take the communion in your hands right now as we partake strength to our bodies. We remember the Lord right now. And so I want to start with the communion juice this morning. And you will take the cup right now. And I want you to I want you to pray this prayer after me. Would you do that right now? Come, don't don't switch off. Stay online with me. Let's do this together. If you don't have juice, even get water. Get a glass of water, that's okay, and some bread. And 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 just prepare yourself right now. And everybody right now, say after me right now. Satan cannot condemn me. Because the blood of Jesus. Repeat after me. Because the blood of Jesus has covered all my sin. Say it. I belong to God. And I will be everything that he longs for me to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've opened my heart to His forgiveness and to His promise of new life and everlasting life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Let us drink in remembrance of the Lord. In like manner, we take the bread. And I want you to repeat this after me. Satan cannot stop me. Hallelujah. Say it. Say, pray it, church. Satan cannot stop me. Hallelujah. Because God has cleansed me. Come into my life. And give and given me promises. Hallelujah. God has come into my life, say, come into my life, and given me promises that I will become. Oh, hallelujah. Say it, beloved, pray it. Everything he says, I will be. I'm learning, oh, hallelujah, to be still and know that he 
is God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let us eat together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let me pray for you as you give to the Lord this morning. As you sow your tithes and your offering into this house. Every praise church family. If you were in church this morning, you would have not left the house of the Lord without giving a seed. Without giving an offering. I know every meeting that I go to, I would make sure I have an offering. Sometimes I leave the meeting to go draw the cash so that I can give to God. This morning, I'm asking you to give an offering. Many of you are watching us online. The Lord is speaking to you right now. Sow a seed into this ministry. The bank details will be on the screen. Give not to praise church, but to the Lord. And you connect with what God is doing even in this ministry. Your tithe, your offering helps there to be meat in this house. So I'm asking you right now to give to the Lord. Father, I thank you for every faithful tither of praise church. Thank you for every partner. Thank you for every person that will sow a seed into this ministry. Father, you are no man's debtor. Whatsoever man sows, so shall he reap. And I pray a blessing right now that you, O oh Father, will take care of every need. Right now, I pray this week will be blessed. You'll open doors that no man can shut. You will shut doors that no man can open. I pray that now. I pray every business will prosper. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl will prosper. And you will keep us, you will hide us and cover us with your wings today, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful Sunday morning that you have given to us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you now and give you peace. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Now and even until Jesus comes. And all God's people say, Amen and Amen. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'm standing with you. I'm just a phone call away. I want you to keep in touch with us. Amen. We are built for relationship. And our church is strengthening families for life. So we are there for you, beloved. Connect with us. Comment with us. Send us a message. Like this broadcast. Share the word of the Lord this morning. Let somebody encourage. Be encouraged to be still and know that He is God. I love you. Have a wonderful Lord's Day and have a blessed week in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you for joining us at Praise Church South Africa, Church Online. It was a joy to have you. If you are blessed, please feel free to like our broadcast, post a comment, and please do share this broadcast. You can connect with us on Facebook and YouTube at Praise Church SA or visit our website at www.praisechurch.co.za. Alternatively, drop us an email at info at praisechurch.co.za. To give to God, our banking details will appear on the screen and you can also snap scan for your convenience. Thank you again for being a part of our church service here at Praise Church South Africa, where our mission is reaching the world through the love and grace of Jesus Christ, cultivating true worshippers and strengthening families for life. God bless you, family. See you next Sunday at 9.30 a.m.